brought to you by L&M, the modern cigarette that lets you get full, exciting flavor through the modern miracle of the pure white miracle tip. Live modern. Smoke L&M. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> the mail, Chester? I sure did, Mr. Dillon. And if that railroad gets any slower, yesterday's train's going to start getting into Dodge tomorrow. <laughs> well, that's happened a couple of times. Uh, is anything important? I ain't had a chance to look. What? Well, it took Will Borgler so long to get them mailbags sorted. Oh, say, he's coming over here in a little while, Mr. Dillon. Huh? Will is? What for? I don't know. But he's got something on his mind he's about to bust his britches over. He said it had to do with Jim Rankin. Jim Rankin? Well, I hated to bring it up, Mr. Dillon, you and Jim Rankin being close friends like you was. I can't figure what Will Borgler would know about Jim's murder. He never gets out of that depot except to eat. Well, maybe he's heard something from El Paso, something over the telegraph. There's nothing to hear, Chester, and there won't be. He was killed for that payroll he was carrying. But they never did find the body. Well, they buried him somewhere out there on the desert, more than likely, and then jumped the border. Mm, they sure could get a long way south on $60,000, all in banknotes. Wouldn't be no weight to it. Wouldn't even fill a saddlebag. <laughs> it's funny, I was always joshing him about that. A full-grown man being a messenger boy for Wells Fargo. Going around carrying a little old hand case with him. And being a target for every hold-up man west of St. Louis. I know. I never had no call to be plaguing him. When I think of it now, I could just kick myself. Ah, uh, Jim knew you didn't mean it, Chester. Yeah, you know, he was one of the best. I rode a lot of country with Jim Rankin back when he was a lawman. Evening, Marshal. Oh, uh, come on in, Will. What's this news about Jim Rankin? Uh, just that you and everybody else is wrong, that's all. Oh, why so? Because all of you figured them killers must have headed south after they murdered Rankin. But they've come north, Marshal. Well, what makes you think so? These. A couple of banknotes, $10 silver certificates, American Federal Bank of Boston. Uh, Chester, give me that Wells Fargo list of serial numbers, will you? Yes, sir. Already checked them, Marshal. They're on the list. Where'd you get these, Will? They turned up in my cash box at the depot. Somebody bought a ticket with them. Who? Do you know? It was Miss Lily over to the Long Branch. Lily. Mm -hmm. That pretty one with the yellow hair. She bought a ticket on the Santa Fe to Kansas City. Said she was aiming to go back there on a visit. Why, them killers might be right here in Dodge, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, I hope so, Chester. I sure do hope so. <laughs> Enjoy the full, exciting flavor of today's finest tobaccos. 
through the modern miracle of the L&M Miracle Tip. Through the pure white Miracle Tip, L&M tastes richer, smokes cleaner, draws easier. No other cigarette, plain or filter, gives you all the flavor you want. The rich, exciting flavor you get only from L&M. So light up, free up, let your taste come alive. Live modern, smoke L&M. Make today your big red letter day and start to live the modern way. Live, live, live modern. Get L&M today. See you, Matt. You've been a real stranger the last month. Ever since I... Well... Since Jim Rankin was murdered, huh? Uh, I didn't mean to rub salt in. No, it's all right, Kitty. In fact, that's the reason I'm here now. Huh? Uh, is Lily around somewhere? Well, she's upstairs, I suppose. I'm kind of surprised. Odd uh, what? You... A marshal's pay won't get you far in that club, Matt. The dues are pretty high, you know. This wouldn't be just a case of one pretty woman talking about another pretty woman, would it? No, seriously, Matt. Didn't Jim ever tell you about it? Jim? Jim Rankin. You didn't know about it? About what? I thought you knew he was spending all his time with Lily. No, I didn't. Uh, I'll see you later, Kitty. Quite a surprise. I understand you're leaving for Kansas City. I'm just going for a visit. Is there a law against it, Marshal? Or do you care personally? You bought a railroad ticket this afternoon from Will Borgler. You paid for it with a couple of $10 notes of the American Federal Bank of Boston. Oh my, you have been taking an interest. Where did you get those banknotes, Lily? Oh, come now, Mark. I want to know where you got those bills. Why, I don't know where I got them. You don't know, huh? Of course not. The, well, the gentlemen who come into the Long Branch are usually quite And generous. the gentlemen who come in usually carry gold or silver. Paper money is rare and dodge, and you know it. I don't remember who gave them to me. And what difference does it make? They're good, aren't they? Yeah. And they were stolen from a man who disappeared from a blood-stained room in El Paso, Texas. How do you know? Because Wells Fargo records the serial number of every banknote they ship. And these numbers match. Oh, but I... The man's name was Jim Rankin, in case you've forgotten him in the last 30 days. Marshal, Jim and I were going to be married. We're going to be married? Is it that unbelievable? Well, it's just that Jim never mentioned it, that's all. He knew what you'd say. When did you see him last, Lily? Ten days before he got killed. He went from here to St. Louis and then straight to El Paso. Did you know his plans, where he was going to stay in El Paso, how much money he was carrying? What are you trying to say? I just asked you... Sorry, I couldn't make it any sooner. Well, you get out of here, mister. You've got the wrong room. What? Yes, I have. Sorry, folks, I was looking for Wait somebody just else. a minute. You're a gambler, aren't you? Houseman over at the Alifraganza. That's right, Marshal. Deuce McCoy. Who were you looking for? Nobody. I'll not bother you folks any longer. McCoy, just... 
You wouldn't happen to have any banknotes on you by any chance, would you? Banknotes? <laughs> I'm strictly gold standard, Marshal. I got caught with some of that worthless paper trash during the rebellion. My apologies, ma'am, Marshal. Why are you looking at me that way? I never saw him before in my life. Lily, if you're in the clear, then I'm sorry for misjudging you. You should be. But if you're not, if you did have anything to do with Jim's murder, I'll bring you in for it if it takes me the rest of my life. Three days went by, and things stayed pretty much the same. I found out Jim Rankin had told a couple of people that he was going to marry Lily. And she could have been telling the truth about the two banknotes. Maybe she didn't remember where she'd got them. But she had lied about one thing. About not knowing Deuce McCoy. Word had gotten around town that she and Deuce had been thicker than thieves for a long time. But that didn't help me. Neither one had been out of Dodge in six months. And then one evening about eight o'clock, Kitty came into the office with... The news that started a landslide. Well, oh, oh, Miss Kitty. Matt, Matt, there's something funny going on. What do you mean, Kitty? Lily, she didn't show up for work this evening, so I went upstairs looking for her. All her clothes, the costumes, they're gone. She's cleaned everything out. You know where she lives? Yeah, she's got a room at L.A. Grotz's place, down south of the Dodge house, a couple of streets. Yeah, I know where it is. Chester, come on, let's go. <laughs> Yes, have an L&M. Enjoy a really modern cigarette. A cigarette that gives you all the full, exciting flavor of today's finest tobaccos. No other cigarette, plain or filter, gives you the flavor you get through the modern miracle of the L&M Miracle Tip. Through the pure white Miracle Tip, L&M tastes richer, smokes cleaner, draws easier. So light up, free up, let your taste come alive, live modern. Smoke L&M. Make today your big red letter day and start to live the modern way. Live, live, live modern. Get L&M today. Lily wasn't at the room and house, and nobody there had seen her since mid-afternoon. So Chester and I went back and took a look at her room in the Long Branch. Aunt Kitty was right. She'd cleaned out. Great to goodness, Mr. Dillon, if this ain't the most upset room... That's kind of a mess, all right. Things throw it around every which way. Looks like a cyclone hit it. Somebody was hunting for something. Well, you'd think Lily would know where things was at. It was somebody else, Chester, after Lily had gone. Well, where do you think she's gone to, Mr. John? Well, she bought a railroad ticket to Kansas City. Mm. Night train leaves in half an hour. Yeah, we better get over to the depot. Come on. You know, it's kindly hard to think ill of a woman as pretty as Lily. Man just can't hardly help believing anything she wants him to. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Hey, I'm glad you're here. I was just aiming to send a boy over to tell you. Tell me what, Will? Well, it's about them two. They're here. Miss Lily and that there gambler feller, Deuce McCoy. Oh? Uh-huh. Yeah, he, he, he's the one that brought the trunks in, but uh, the part of them's hers. He wasn't fooling me none. Are they both leaving? Is he going with her? Well, I reckon so. Bought himself a ticket to Kansas City, same as hers. They didn't pay for it with no banknotes, though. He used gold. Uh-huh. Where are they now, Will? Well, they've been hanging around down there at the end of the platform. Stayed clear of the light, I figured. Uh, 
Maybe you don't want to draw no attention to themselves. It ain't like Miss Lillian, either. Ordinarily, she'd have herself rigged out fit to kill. Be a strutting around here a bowl of grass. But... What? That was down the platform. Yeah. Come on, Chester. Straight ahead, Marshal. There they end. Yeah, I see. Look, Mr. Dillon, somebody jumped on a horse. Yeah. Hold it there! He's getting away. Couldn't have been nothing but plain luck in the dark like this, Mr. Dillon. I'd have sworn I had him in my sights. So. Marshal! Yeah. It's uh, Miss Lily and, and that gambler fella. They shot both of them. He's dead. No. Hmm? Who was it, Lily? Who shot you? He... He came back. Who? Jim. Jim? I, I never th- thought he... You going to go after Mr. Dillon? No, we'll wait till sun up, Chester. Sun up? There's no hurry, not now. I got a pretty good idea where Jim will head for. Mr. Dillon, how can you be so doggone certain he's out here somewhere? Because I know how he thinks, Chester. Sure, I never see such a country. Rim rock, gullies, mesquite, plum thickets. We couldn't find him in this stuff in a month of Sundays. I think he'll find us. Oh, dear, I'd as leave you wouldn't talk that way. Mr. Dillon gives a man the willies. Knowing all the time there might be a gun sight leveled on him and not knowing just when the shot... Well, you know now, Chester. Hold it. Right where you are. He's just by that point of rim rock. Oh, forget it. He's got perfect cover. Is that you, Matt? Yeah, it's me, Jim. Leave your gun. Come up here. Come alone. <coughs> Stay here with the horses, Chester. Don't do it, Mr. Dillon. You don't know what he's up to. There's only one way to find out. Here, take my gun. Oh, well, I just don't like this. I don't like this. Over this way, Matt. Matt, you're a fool. I could have shot you dead. I was betting you wouldn't. Why'd it have to be you? That's the difference, Jim. It had been somebody sooner or later. You knew it was me or... You wouldn't have come here. How did you know, Matt? Lily told me. Before she died. She... I'm sorry about that. In a way. Last night I went to her room. And found she'd taken the money and run out on me. I've been living down along the river bottom since I rode up from El Paso. I was... What's the matter, Jim? He... It was pretty good shooting last night, Matt. Dark as it was. We better get you in the dock. Oh, no. Forget it, Matt. I know how I stand. Lily never did mean to marry me, man. She told me last night there on the station platform... And then she laughed. Take it easy, Jim. She helped me plan that fake robbery in El Paso. She was all for it, I thought. But she was all for the money, not for me. 
Never known a woman like Lily. All fire and diamonds and soft as a kitten. Yeah. You're funny. I know I, I'd do the same thing again. If she asked me to, what do you think of that? I'm not your judge, Jim. Matt, remember the time that we... The time we rode out of San Antonio? And we rode from San Antonio? Yeah, I remember, Jim. We were planning to ride down to Laredo. Let's see if we... Let's see if we could... Jim. Jim. Yeah, Jim. I remember. moment, our star, William Conrad. When you're at home and use a match to light a cigarette or the stove, what do you do with that match when you're through with it? You make sure it's out, of course. After all, you don't want to have the house burned down. For the same reason, you wouldn't think of leaving the kitchen stove blazing away when you left home. But some of us forget these precautions when we're in the woods. Some folks will stroll through heavily wooded country, light a cigarette, and casually toss the match away without bothering to see if it's out. They'll also toss the cigarette butt away, still burning. And if they've been using a campfire, they may even leave that to smolder. From now on, make yourself a committee of one to help prevent forest fires, because forest fires are usually started by just such carelessness. Whenever you're in the woods or driving past a wooded area, break all matches in two before discarding them. Make sure all smokes are completely out and drown all campfires. Don't leave any sparks behind. They can cost our country millions of dollars in lost timberland. Remember, only you can prevent forest fires. And now, William Conrad. You know, there were rifles of all makes out on the frontier. Springfields, Henrys, Spencers, Colts, Maynards, Enfields, Sharps, even old Flintlocks. And next week, a man discovers it doesn't matter what it's fired from. A bullet kills a man awful fast. And that was the West. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The script was specially written for Gunsmoke by Les Crutchfield, with editorial supervision by John Meston. The music was composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Ray Kemper and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Lynn Allen, Tim Graham, Lawrence Dobkin, and John Daner. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story on Gunsmoke.